Hello and welcome to a new video series about hydraulics. There was or there is a video series about basics of hydraulics. Now we go a little bit more in detail. Yeah? Now we, the first things we are going to talk about is uh, how we can select things. Yeah? How we can check or how we can make a dimensioning. Okay? So we want to make an hydraulic system. Yeah? How it's basically working was in the basics. Now we're going to talk about realization. Yeah? Where to start? Where to start? Okay, this is the first. I want to build something. Yeah? Where, where to start? I mean, there are pumps, there are uh, cylinders, there are valves and, uh, and everything. Where do we have to start? Well, obviously, we want to move something. Yeah? So, the starting point shall be there, yeah? at the cylinder, at the servo motor. Okay? We have to dimension the servo motor first, yeah? because the servo motor is the word, the, the one thing which is moving something, and I, I hopefully you know what to move. Yeah? If you don't know, know this, then... So, let's have a short look on this dimensioning of a hydro cylinder, of a hydraulic cylinder. Let's make a drawing of a cylinder first. Huh? Well, okay, drawing. I already start with the drawing. One thing is for sure. Yeah, you have to select if you have to, if you want to use a single acting or a double acting cylinder. Okay, single acting cylinder only gives work in one direction. Other direction is free. Huh? Double acting cylinder Please remember, I will also link the video, which we have talked about in Pneumatics. Uh, so, uh, double acting cylinder can work in both directions. Uh, actively going out, actively going in. I'm now going to start or draw a double acting cylinder, simply because it's a little bit more complicated and a single acting cylinder is then should be covered also by this. Okay? So, first choice, single acting, double acting. Okay? And now, let's draw a double acting cylinder. There's the piston. There's the rod. Connectors. Just the drawing of a double acting cylinder. Okay? So we do have liquid on both sides. Yeah? Here we have pressure one, here we have pressure two. Okay? And we also have two different areas, of course. Yeah? So here, this area, yeah? this is area one. Yeah? And this is only a ring, not a full circle, a ring. Yeah? This is area 2 here. Okay? And usually, let's make it also here closed. Usually, there is a force which we want to ever overcome. Yeah? So there is the load. Okay? There is a load which we want to move. Here is the force of our cylinder from the pressure Fp. Okay. These are the two things. And if the force of the pressure is bigger than the force of the load, this will start to move in each direction. It does not really matter in which direction, but in each direction. So, how do we get now? to the force of the pressure. Okay. On this side, we do have a certain pressure P1, we said. Yeah. And an area A1, multiplied by A1. This is the force on this side. However, we also have to consider uh, efficiency, yeah. mechanical hydraulic efficiency this. Yeah. And now 
On the other side, we have also a pressure in the area. Let's say we want to move it out. Huh? On the other side, we have a pressure P2 and the area P2. So there's also a force in the wrong direction huh? because there is simply the oil cannot go out without friction. Huh? So there is some pressure left here. So we have here minus P2 multiplied by A2. And this is the force of the pressure, Fp. This can be developed by the cylinder. Okay? And this must of course be equal, huh? or might maybe a little bit bigger, but equal to the load, and then it's starting to move. Huh? So if this is the same as the load, it is moving. Okay. Now, let's say here this diameter is called D, capital letter, and this diameter is called D, okay, small letter. Huh? That's the rod, that's the piston diameter. So our area A1 is D squared P4. Okay. And our area A2 is D squared minus D squared. That's it. Okay. This is, these are the two areas. Okay. So let's assume now the, the pressure on this side yeah, is almost zero. Yeah? So almost zero. So P2, let's say, is zero. Then let's have a look at this. So there is the load. Yeah? And this must equal P1 multiplied by D squared P fourth. Yeah? Multiplied by this efficiency. Okay. Mechanic hydraulic efficiency. This mechanic hydraulic efficiency usually is in the area of 85% to 95%. Okay. These are usual usual efficiencies. So let's reform this. Yeah. So this is on one hand there is FL left, yeah, and then I have this four. I can move this four to the other side, so it's four times, yeah, and then there is P1 brown, P1 multiplied by the efficiency. Multiplied by 4, no, by P. Yeah. I have this at the other side, I have P at the other side, P1 at the other side. Yeah. And what is left is then D squared. And if I bring the square also to the other side, it looks like this. Yeah. From this formula, I could calculate the size or the diameter of my of my piston, huh? the required. If the diameter is bigger than this, huh? I can overcome this force. If I have to also to move in the other direction, yeah, I have to use the other diameters. Okay. So this now gives the diameter of the piston. According to the load, the force load. Yeah? There are there are uh, ratios. Yeah? One ratio is the ratio between the two values. Yeah? It's called phi. Yeah? A1 divided by A2. A2. 
how much bigger is A1 and how much bigger is A2. There are standard cylinders out there. Yeah? So I calculate now this D, okay? And then I select the standard cylinder. There are preferred combinations of this phi value. Yeah? So I select one diameter here and I use a preferred combination. Then I also have the diameter of the, of the rod. Okay? This is how this is working. There, this is in, 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 in the standard D in ISO 3320 and 3322. There are preferred values of this phi here. Okay? Then we have a first estimation of our, our diameter, of our diameters even. Yeah? However, there is still one thing which we have to choose. This is this P1 here. Okay? This P1 is the pressure which can be applied here. Yeah? So I have to also select a pressure value, yeah? initial pressure value. So okay, standard pressure value 160. There are also standard pressure values. 160, 25, standard pressure values. Yeah? However, there is something before this. Yeah? So there are valves before, there are, we said there's a friction. Okay? So when the cylinder is moving, I'm going to have a pressure loss. So there is P1, yeah? is the system pressure minus the losses. However, I don't know the losses yet because I just designed a cylinder. Okay? So I have to guess them. Huh? So I choose a system pressure, let's say 160 bars, and then I say, okay, I estimate the pressure losses to 40 bars. Huh? So I have here 120 bar left. And with this, I make my dimensioning. If, in the end, I realize that the losses are higher than I thought first, yeah, then I have to do it over again. Yeah? I have to adapt a little bit. Yeah? Then it's an iterative process somehow. Okay? So, now we have the cylinder. For the, from the forces, from the viewpoint of forces, we have now the cylinder designed. So the cylinder should be strong enough hmm, that we can overcome the forces we expect. It gives a certain diameter. Now, we have also to, to look into the bending. If the cylinder is rigid enough, yeah, if this diameter just... we have not really chosen it, we said, okay, there is a standard uh, ratios between the two values and I choose one. Yeah. Is this rod thick enough to, to hold? Okay. Is, this, is this good enough? Yeah. There we do have the bending. Yeah. So we check now our cylinder if it's maybe Click, yeah. If it's bent, yeah. there is. Maybe you remember from your mechanics lesson. There are things called. There is a, a, a version called from Euler. Bending according to Euler, where we have three of four load cases. Actually, we have four load cases. Load case one. Load case two. Load case three. And load case four. Okay. Load case one would be if I have here is I don't know platform with a mass. Yeah. Here is my cylinder. And this is mounted to the ground simply. Yeah. Load case one loose. Okay, so from from schematic it would look like this. This is the original line, and here we might bend away a little bit. Yeah? This is the length. 
in question. It depends also on this length. Yeah? How long can this be? We'll come to this. Yeah? Load case 2 would be if I have something like guiding here. Yeah? So there is the mass, it's now guided at the top, yeah? it's connected via movable joint to the cylinder and the cylinder is also movable mounted to the ground. Okay. Here again we have the length. Here this would look like would look like this. So there are joints which this is sliding and the bending would maybe look like this. Okay, load case two. Here it's guided. Load case three is if we don't have this movable joint here, if we have such a type of joint. Yeah? So it's guided at the top again. There is the mass still. Yeah? The guidance. There is also this movable joint. There is the servo motor, the cylinder, and this is simply bolted. Yeah? So this is rigged. Yeah? The according schematics would look like this. Here we are mounted, this might be, might look like this. Okay. Here we are really rigid. Again we have here the length, the real length. And the last load case would be if we also have here no joint, which can be moved, but rigged connection. Eh? We are guided, eh? we have this mess here, this is guided by whatever, and here we are fixed, no joint. Here we are also fixed, so no movement possible, everything's rigged, eh? so here we are really And the only movement would be then like this. Also here we have the length L, which we see in the reality. Okay. These are the four load cases. Now why do we divide them into load cases? Simply because this here is much it's not that easy to control. Yeah? I need a, a thicker part yeah? to overcome also those forces. Here, nothing much can happen. Yeah? It's already suitable to use a thinner rod here. Yeah? So there is, according to Euler, there's not only the real length, there's also the bending length. So here, this bending length is two times the real length. Okay? Here, this bending length is the real length. Yeah? Here the bending length is a half of the real length. Yeah? And here the bending length is the square root of a half. Yeah? Now I have a somewhat uh, a length which is working, acting, acting length. Okay? Not the real length, the acting length, which will take it. Yeah? And I can calculate the forces, here are the forces, F. Okay. I can now calculate, in each load case, I can calculate the applicable force, the allowed force, with the same with the same formula looks like this F allowed okay, is looks <laughs> Looks simple, right? What are these? P 
pi is pi, yeah, 3.14, yeah, e is the modulus of elasticity, yeah, so this is also called Young's modulus in, in English, yeah, so e is the Elasticitätsmodul in, in German, modulus of elasticity. For steel, for instance, this is 210,000 Newton per square millimeter. Standard steel. Yeah. This tells how, it tells basically how rigid this thing is. Yeah? The material, it's a material constant. This I yeah, is uh, the area of inertia, area movement of inertia, inertia, Flächenträgheitsmoment. Yeah, or second movement of area, yeah. area movement of inertia. Yeah. So this, this is taking into account the material, this E, this I is taking into account the size of the material or the form of the material. And usually we have round rods, okay, and if we have round rods, this I is calculated from the diameter to the fourth pi divided by 64. Yeah. If you want to have a closer look at this, look into your mechanics books. Yeah. They are cool. Like I said, we in automation technology, we do application. Yeah. So this takes now into account, you see there is this D, yeah, the diameter of the rod. And this LK is this acting length from Euler. Yeah? And this nu is a security factor, safety factor. And usually we are here at three or something like this. Yeah? Safety. Yeah? To just that, okay, I calculate something and then I use it triple. <laughs> okay? So and from this, yeah, I can calculate the, the diameter. Yeah? Here is the small diameter. Of course, this is the diameter of the rod. Yeah? I can calculate the diameter of the rod. If this is applicable or not. Yeah? So here, 2.5 up to 3.5. Yeah? Usual values. And if I enter this I and this E and so on, I can use the allowed forces, which is, again, this load force here. Yeah? And then I get a D for my diameter of the rod. Yeah? If what I have cho chosen here was correct, fine. Yeah? If not, I maybe need a little bit thicker diameter. I again, choose a new preferred ratio of phi, yeah, and then I have it. Yeah. So now I really have it settled. I have the big diameter or the diameter of the piston yeah, according to forces I have to apply. I have the small diameter, the diameter of the rod according the bending. Yeah. And now I have fixed my, my, my cylinder. Yeah. Of course, the length I have to choose, but this is usually depending on the application. Because if I want to move something, I have to know how far it's going to move. Yeah? Because I also need this here. Yeah? This is, of course, the maximum length. Yeah? And uh, attention, always, this is not only the, the movement length, these are twice of the movement length, yeah? because we have to go in the cylinder as well. Yeah? So. Now it's fixed. Okay. Now the mechanical parameters of my cylinders are fixed. Then usually there is also a time. Okay. I want the cylinder to go to move in 10 seconds. I want to move it in 12 seconds. I want to move it in 5 seconds or whatever. Yeah. Depending on your application, it has to move with a certain speed. Yeah. Since I know now the, the physical parameters of the diameters, I know also now how many liters per second I have to fill in at this side 
that I can move to the other side. Okay, so I know now how many liters per second I am using. And this is how I can select the pump. Yeah. This is then the next step. Yeah. Then I select the pump. I know, let's say we need 15 liters per second. Yeah. Then I have to select the pump, which can be, which is able to select to, to, to deliver 15 liters per second at the system pressure. Okay. If this is settled, yeah, then I also have to take into account yeah, if I move it in this direction, now I've selected the pump, yeah, delivers a certain amount of, of, of flow. Yeah. If I'm moving in this direction, yeah, I will get out volume here, and if I fill in here 15 liters per second, I get here out less than 15 liters per second because it's moving with a certain speed, and here the volume is smaller, so I get a smaller value of flow. In this direction there's no issue. However, in the other direction, if I now fill in these 15 liters here, I will move the, the rod in this direction, and here I have more volume, so I will get out more than these 15 liters per second. Okay? I will also move within the, a different speed. I, if I move out with a certain speed, I will move in faster, because I, if I apply the same volume flow, yeah, then since the area and the volume is smaller, it has to move faster. I have to take this into account. So usually then you give uh, a certain speed, opening, closing. Yeah. And also, by the dimensioning, we will talk about this, dimensioning of the lines, yeah, I also have to uh, take into account this increased flow at the return line. Okay, So my return line, because this is going to the valve, and the valve, we have to dimension the valve to the bigger flow, of course. Yeah? Not to the flow which is going to, but to the flow which is coming back, because this might be bigger than the flow which is going to the cylinder. Yeah, that's the speed of the speed of the piston. Then, if our piston reaches a speed of four piston bigger than six meters per minute, we need cushioning. Yeah? Then we need something that we damp this movement at the end. Yeah, we we need and position cushioning gepolstert, yeah? gedämpft, damped, a damped end position we need then, so that we are not going to the block, that we are going to the block. Okay? This is how you select the cylinder. Okay? Calculate the force. Calculate the bending, you have the diameters, calculate the movement time, check if you have positioning yeah? or if you have a too large velocity, then use cushioning. Yeah? And then you can even also already say how many liters per second for this one cylinder your pump has to deliver. If you want to move more than one cylinder, it will be double, triple, whatever. Yeah? So. And this is uh, basically how you select a uh, cylinder and also how you select, select the pump somehow. Yeah. We'll briefly talk about pump selection next time, also in a separate video, but this will be very brief. And with the pump, with the cylinder, now we select the tank. Okay. This is then the next video. For this time, Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.